Hello everyone. This video is for uh, module 9 using action queries and advanced table relationships. Again, module 9 using action queries and advanced table relationships. I will be completing the review assignment found on page AC540. AC540. The database that we will be using is a brand new database and it is called ORDERING, O-R-D-E-R-I-N-G. So please go out to Blackboard, to Student Files, and find the database called ORDERING. While you're doing that, I will read the opening paragraph and continue with the assignment. If you need to pause this, feel free to do so and come back to it when you're ready with the ORDERING database. The ORDERING database contains data about Riverview Veterinary Care Center supplies and their products, as well as data about the invoices from the suppliers and the payments made by Riverview Veterinary Care Center to the suppliers. The database also contains a form and some reports. Kimberly wants you to define relationships between the tables and to create some new queries for her. Uh, for her. Complete the following steps. Open the ordering database. So I have mine saved on my desktop. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. So step one, open the ordering database located, blah, blah, blah. And then make sure that you enable content if necessary as your security warning at the beginning. Step two, modify the first record in the table suppliers table. So I'm going to open up table supplier. Uh, to the contact first name and contact last name columns contain your first and last names, and the notes field contains your city and state or country. So for the first record, I come over to contact first name, which currently says student first. I'm going to replace that with Steve. Tab over to student last. Type in Whiteman. And then I'm going to tab over to where it says notes, and I'm going to type in Columbus Ohio. Okay, so that's all they wanted me to do for step number two. Modify the first record of the table supplier table data sheet so the contact first name and contact last name columns contain your first and last names and the notes field contains your city and state or country. Close the table. So close the table. Step three, create a make table query Based on the table product table, selecting the product ID, supplier ID, product name, price, temp control, and sterile fields, and selecting only those records for products that require a temperature controlled environment. Use TBL product special environment as the new table name. Store the table in the current database and then run the query. Save the query as QRY make special environment. Close the query. <coughs> okay. So I'm going to go as, I, as though I'm creating a regular query. So I go to create query design. It's telling me to base this off the table product table. So I'm going to bring in that table only. I'm going to close my property sheet over here. I'm going to expand my table like I have shown in previous videos so that I don't have to worry about a scroll bar. And it says to, by selecting the product ID, so I'm going to double click on product ID or however you have now felt comfortable bringing those down to the bottom. Supplier ID, product name, price, temp control, and sterile fields. And selecting only those records for products that require a temperature control environment. So I go down to the criteria for temp control. It's a yes, no data type. So I'm going to type in yes. And there's my query. Now to turn it into a make table action query, because that's what this chapter is all about, are action queries, things that perform actions. I come up here. And here are where I find under query type on the ribbon is where I find my different action queries that we will be utilizing today. This one is a make table. 
So I'm going to click on that. It wants to know what is the name that you want to give to this new table. And in the instructions, it says use TBL product special environment as the new table name. So I'm going to type in TBL product special environment. E N V I R O N. And then click OK. Now, I have turned it into a make table action query, but the action does not actually take place until I run the query. So it's not good enough just to turn it into an action query like I've done so far. You actually have to run it to have the action take place. So I'm going to run the query. At this point, I get a message that says you are about to paste nine rows into a new table. That new table being the table that I called it in the previous step. And it's going to retrieve the nine records that have a temp control of a criteria of yes. As soon as I say yes, you will see a new table appear over here on the left, um, which will be the table name that we just created. So I click yes. There it is right there. It just um, created a new table. Hence, it's called a make table action query. I'm going to save this query. And they want me to call this QRY make special environment. E V I I R O N. I click OK. Now, when it saves an action query like it did over here, it provides the little uh, logo next to it to express to me that it is a uh, action query. So that's what that little black exclamation point means, is that is a make table action query. I can close the query. And just for grins, if you want to go out and take a look at this, if I look at this new table that I just created, I, I'll double click on it. It has only those that are, have a temp control of yes to them. Okay? Now, we're going to pay attention to these ones here in just a second here. Step number four, as a matter of fact, we're going to do it right now. Open the table product special environment table, which I just did, and then I just closed it. So I'll open it up yet again. And then adjust the column widths to their best fit. So I can highlight all of these columns by clicking, I get that little black arrow and clicking on product ID, and then hold down my shift key and click on the sterile. That will select all of them. And then double click at the very end here where I get the line and a left and right arrow and double click and it will resize all my columns so I don't have to do each one individually. So step four, open the table product special environment table and then adjust column widths to their best fit. Format the temp control and sterile fields to yes, no. Hint, in design view, so I go back to design view, Select the field name, so I'll go to temp control first, and then select the format property for yes, no. So down here I go to the properties where it says format, drop the arrow down and pick yes, no as the format, and do the same thing for sterile. Format, yes, no. Okay. Um, hint, in design view, select the field name, then select the format property for yes, no. Save and close the table. So I save it and close it. And that's step number four. Step number five, create an append. Append means add. So we're going to be adding data to an existing table. Create an append query based on the table product table. So again, I'm going to just go to create query design. Nothing special here. And I'm going to bring in the table product. This is what we've been doing all along with our queries. Again, I'm going to resize this so I don't have to deal with a scroll bar. Selecting the product ID, the supplier ID, the product name, the price, the temp control, and the stair. Okay. And selecting only those records that are sterile and do not require a temperature controlled environment. Okay, so sterile 
that uh, only those records that are sterile. So we're going to put a yes on the criteria for sterile. And do not require a controlled temperature environment. So this would be a no. And I want those criteria to be on the exact same lines so that it has to meet both of those conditions. Be in a sterile environment and not have temp control. Not require a temp control. Okay. I'm going to go up to my action queries, and this time we're doing an, an append action query. We're adding this to an existing table. So I click append, and this looks almost identical to a make table, but this time we don't type a new table at name in because we're not making a new table. We're appending to an existing table. So we drop the arrow down, and let's pick which one they want me to do it to. Create an append query based on the table product table, selecting the product ID, supplier ID, uh, supplier ID, product name, price, temp control, and sterile, and selecting only wrote those records that are sterile and do not require temperature control environment. Done. Append the records to the table product special environment, the one that we just created. Now, click OK. Again. We've turned it into an action query, but the action doesn't take place until you run it. So I'm going to click the Run button, and it says you are about to append six rows into the table that you just specified, which is the TBL Product Special Environment Table. Okay, um, I'm going to say yes, and it worked. We'll double check it in just a second, but now they want me to save this query. And this query I'm going to call QRY append sterile and click OK. Open the table products special environment table and then verify that the records have been added. So if I go out here and open up this table, they have been added. Here's the no yes is down here at the bottom. Okay. So these last six records, I believe it is, that got added. Okay? So then it says close the table and close the query. So we've done a make table and an append action queries, and we're done through step number five. Step number six, suppliers are offering a 10% discount off of the regular price for all products in the table product special environment table. Create an update query to select all records in the table product specification environment table. Decrease the price field values by 10%. Run the query, save it as special QRY special discount, and then close the query. Hint, use the expression 0.9 times square bracket price square bracket. Open the table products special environment table, verify the price field values have been reduced by 10%, then close the table. Well, I'm going to open up the table first, and I'm going to write down on a piece of paper at least the first three prices as they stand right now. So $72, $60 for the next record, and then $137. I want to see that indeed these numbers will change when I'm done doing what I want to do. All right, I'm going to close this table. I'm going to go to Create and Query Design. The table that I need to bring in is the, the table that has the field that I want to um, do an update to, and that is the TBL Product Special Environment. Now, to make our lives easier, the only field that we have to bring down is the one that we want to update, which is Price. So I bring down Price. Now, I have to turn it into an Update Action Query. So we've done make table, we've done append, and now here is update. So I click on update. What do I want to update it to? Well, it gives me the big hint in the instructions. Hint, use the expression 0 0.9 times square bracket, the field name price, just like it is in your table, close your square bracket. All field names in a calculation must be contained within square brackets. Again, we learned that in earlier chapters. Very important to understand that. So I'm telling you to give me 90% of the current price field. 
That's going to provide me the price reduction. As I've said a couple times already in this video, we've turned it into an action query, but the action doesn't take place until we actually run it. So when I run it, it says you were about to update 15 rows. I'm updating every single record because I did not add a criteria to my query. So I'm doing it for all records. So that's right. I click yes. Now to verify that it worked, I'm going to double click on the table. And there's the prices. It was 72, it was 60, and it was 137. So it appears to have worked. What you don't want to do is you don't want to say, well, I'm not sure if it worked, I'll run it again. Because if you do that, you're going to reduce it yet another 10% each and every time you run it. So you have to be very careful of that. So verify it by actually going to the table itself. Okay, I'm going to save this query. And they want me to call it QRY Special Discount. Click OK, and you can see that we have three special action queries that we've created today, all represented there by the special logo. Now I can close this, and we're done through step number six. Step number seven, create a delete query that deletes all records in the table product supplier environment table in which the price is less than $20. All right, so back we go again. Create, query design. I bring in the table that I want to delete records from, which is the TBL product special environ. Again, the only field that I necessarily have to bring down is price. And I'm going to do a, excuse me, a criteria of less than $20. Less than 20. Okay. I'm going to turn it into a delete action query by clicking on the delete up here on the ribbon for delete action query. Again, I've turned it into a delete action query, but no action has taken place yet until I do what? Until I run it. You're right. So when I run it, it says you were about to delete two rows from the specified table. I'm going to make the great assumption that those two rows have a price of less than 20. So I say yes. And now they're telling me that if I go out and look at the table, I should have 13 records remain. So I'll double click. Sure enough, I have one of 13 records. Everything appears to have worked. I did great. I'm going to save this query, the last of my action queries, as QRY delete price less and click OK. And again, it shows me my special action query sitting right there. And then I close this. All right, two more steps. Step number eight, define a many-to-many -many relationship between the table invoice and table payment tables using the table invoice payment table as the related table. So let's do that first. So I go to my relationship window, database tools, relationships. I want to go to the show table because there's some tables I want to add to this down here. So show table. It says define a many-to-many -many relationship between the table invoice. So I've got to add that one, table invoice. So I double click to add it. If you want to verify, you can move this out of the way. There it is right there. Okay. And the table payment. So I'm going to bring that one in using the table invoice payment table. So I want to find that one. There it is right there. And I'm going to close this. Define a many many relationship between the table invoice and table payment tables using the table invoice payment table as the related table. All right. So I go invoice ID. I always start with my primary key. That's what that little symbol next to invoice ID means. I'm going to take invoice ID, hold on the left side of my mouse, click and drag it on top of invoice ID over here. Enforce my referential integrity. Do cascade update per the instructions. Click create. And then I'm going to do the same thing between payment ID and payment ID here. 
I'm going to enforce my referential integrity, cascade update, and create. Okay. So that completed that part of step number eight. Define a many-to-many -many relationship between the table invoice and the table payment tables. Using the table invoice payment table as the related table. Next part of step eight. Define a one-to-one -one relationship between the primary table supplier table and the related table supplier credit line table. Select the referential integrity option and then use the cascade Okay, so back I go again up here. I've got to add two more tables for this one-to-one -one relationship. And that is I have to add the table supplier and the table supplier credit line table. Okay, so I've added this table and I can move these in separate locations. Where's my table supplier? Right there. Okay. Actually, I don't know if I had to add this one again, so I'm going to delete it because I can now do supplier ID to supplier ID. I already had table supplier in it. That's why I deleted that one. Cast referential, cascade update, and create. And I now have a one-to-one -one relationship. They're both the primary keys and they're relevant tables, so it has to be a one-to-one -one relationship. Um, again, let me just under make you understand that I did bring in table supplier and I noticed that it had an underscore one, which meant that I must have already had it in there. When I spotted it in my window, I went ahead and deleted the second copy of it. I didn't need it and I could use this one to, to establish my relationship. That is step number eight. All right, so I can save my work in my relationship window and then close it. And step number nine. Create a query using a self-join that selects all products in the table product table that are not included in another product. To do so, add two copies of the table product field list to the query design window. So let's do that first. Create, query design, and it says to add two copies of the table product. One, double click one, two. Okay. Again, I'm going to expand these down just so I can see all my fields. I think that will become very important. So let's read this. Create a query using a self-join that selects all products in the table product table that are included in another product. To do so, add two copies of the table product field list to the query design window. Then create a relationship between the product ID field in the first list and the include field in the second list. So I take um, product ID and I'm going to link it to include, include it in right there. So that's what it just told me to do. Then create a relationship between the product ID field in the first list and the product, or I'm sorry, and the include in field in the second list. Okay. The query results should display the product ID and product name fields for the included items. So let me run this. Ah, that's because I didn't have any fields down here. So I should bring in the product ID and the product name. Okay, that's what I didn't do right. The query results should display the product ID and product name fields for the included items. Hint, these should come from the second list. Now see what I did? I brought them from the first. So I'm going to delete these two, get the black arrow, delete, black arrow, delete. Bring them in from the second list is what it told me to do. Product ID, product name. Important to read the instructions very carefully. All right. The query results should display the product ID and the product name fields from the included items. Hint, these should come from the second field list. The query results should also include the product ID and product name fields for the product that are, are, that are collections. All right. So let me run this. There's that, okay. I'm also gonna bring product ID and product name in from the other table because of the statement that says, uh, the query results should also include the product ID and product name fields for the products that are collections assigning the, okay. So I'm gonna run this. Now it says, I'm gonna go back to design view, to change the captions. 
So I click on product ID and I'm going to right click and go to properties and I'm going to change the caption for this field to read, let me see, um, assigning the captions collection product ID. So I'm going to go collection collection product ID and collection so I'll click on the, this one and I'm going to type in collection product name collection product name okay run this there we go we have it up here I'll resize this columns so I can see everything. All right. Sort the records in ascending order by the collection property ID column. So I'll go back to design view and by collection product ID column. So I'll click here and do it in ascending order. Resize all columns to their best fit. All right. So again, if you want to do that, I'm going to do each one individually this time since there's only four of them. Just resize your columns, make sure everything's fitting right. Perfect. We're going to save this query as QRY product collection. Product collections. And click OK and then close it. All right, I'm going to turn to page um, AC541. It says, open the table product special environment table in design view. So right click design view. Specify the primary key. So I'll specify product ID as my primary key. And add an index that allows duplicates for the supplier ID. So I click on supplier ID. I go down to the index that currently says no. I click and drop the arrow down and say duplicates OK. I save my table. I close it. And that was step number 10. Step number 11 says to make a backup copy. So I do file, save as, backup database, save as. I'll save it to my desktop. And click Save. Made a backup copy of it. Compact and repair. So I'll do fire file. Compact and repair. Uh, oh, my goodness. Did file. Compact and repair the database. And then I can close it. And that is the end of the video for Module 9, Using Action Queries and Advanced Table Relationships. Thank you very much and have a great day.